Today we're going to talk about how to read an 835 remittance file, very much at a remedial level. We're going to oversimplify it a bit, but it's going to get you started for those who've never ever seen an EDI file or an 835 file. Uh, this will be a great primer. Brought to you by EMS and our EDI Power Reader. First of all, what is it? Well, the 835 format is a healthcare claim payment advice. That's basically payer generated in response to claims submitted. So a provider submits medical claims to a payer. They hopefully pay them. And along with the, the check is this remittance file. Uh, so it's typically accompanied with the check or the EFT or what have you, but sometimes they're separated. But it's, either way, it's going to tell you what was paid, how much was paid, how much wasn't paid, and of course, most importantly, the whys. Uh, the 835 format itself, first of all, it's an EDI file, electronic data interchange. These formats are very specific. They're mandated in the healthcare world by the HIPAA standard. Uh, but the EDI uh, uh, sets um, have been around in business for decades uh, in banking and automotive, etc. First of all, they are a text file. They are not any kind of proprietary type of file. They are not encrypted in any way. I mean, some people may encrypt them uh, during transmission or uh, for safekeeping, but as the file themselves, they're not encrypted in any way. They're readable characters. They can be named with any naming convention uh, a producer of the file chooses. There's no uh, mandatory naming. You could have a .txt file or a .dat file. It, it doesn't really matter. That's sort of up to the producer of the file. And because it's a text file, you can open them with any text editor. You can even open them up with like Microsoft Word or WordPad. Um, that is a fine way to look at these files. Uh, do not try to edit using a Microsoft Word type document uh, editor because they are formatters as well. And these need to be kept pure. Here is uh, a look at one. I'm actually looking at this one in Notepad, which is a fair editor in that it doesn't have any real formatting issues. Uh, doesn't uh, let you manipulate the file very much, but it's a good way to look at it. One thing you might notice uh, amongst all the characters in there, um, it's a continuous file. It just goes on and on and on, one continuous string of text characters. That is the natural format of an EDI file. So let's talk a little bit about parsing it into its sections, if you will. And there's three primary ones, and again, we're going to oversimplify this a bit, uh, but there's, there's loops. And the loops determine the mapping hierarchy. Everything in the EDI file has a hierarchical loop. We'll get to that a little bit later. Uh, segments is a group of related fields. So information on a patient's name as, you know, first name, last name, et cetera, et cetera. That's a group of related fields. They're part of a segment. And then there are elements. Elements are the actual data fields, such as patient social security number or a claim number or a date of service, that type of thing. Parsing, in order to parse these files, you have to understand not only the loops and segments and elements, but how they're broken apart. And they're broken apart using delimiters. Um, there's lots of them. I'm going to just talk about the two primary ones, which are the element separators and the segment celebrators, uh, separators. Uh, asterisk is the most common element separator, but certainly not the only one. There's a, there's a list of several that can be used, but asterisk is pretty common. Uh, the tilde is probably the most common segment separator. And those are the only two we're going to talk about today. Uh, and all that is, is driven by the Bible, as we like to call it, and that is the implementation guide for each format. This happens to be an 835 we're talking about today. So you're 835 implementation guide, or the spec as it's sometimes called, will tell you exactly what uh, these files are to look like and how they're separated, etc. And here's an example of the uh, table of contents, and you'll see um, each of these. This is a PDF document. You have to purchase these from Washington Publishing, and they're quite expensive. Um, the uh, pages, you know, typical table of contents, will bring you to the details. We'll look at a, a couple of these. But these uh, bold two and three character um, words here, if you will, are, are the segments. And each of those segments will contain information, in this case a CLP here, uh, will contain claim payment information data. All right, so let's go back and look at our file here. And let's do some elementary parsing, if you will. 
if we go back and look at our continuous file here, you'll see we do have some some nice uh, asterisks in there. You can see lots of them. You also see our nice tildes. Those are the two most common we talked about. Uh, the tilde is very useful. If you have a, an editor that allows um, some really uh, interesting search and replace, like, uh, for example, if you could key off of that tilde and insert a global carriage return, this is a very easy way to look at the file. I'm using Ultra Edit here. It's one of many really uh, good editors on the market. Some are free, some are uh, purchased. Um, by inserting a character return or carriage return, rather, every time we see a tilde here, um, we end up putting each of the segments on their own line. Makes it easier to read. Technically, uh, this isn't how the file is supposed to be, um, but a lot of payers, a lot of providers, uh, systems will actually read it with that carriage return in there, even if it's not supposed to be. But for our purposes today, it's certainly a much easier way to look at it. And you'll see each segment, each line now has its own segment on it. And those two or three character um, characters at the front of the line are the actual segment identifiers. So let's blow into this a little bit deeper, blow it up a little bit rather. Um, and let's take a look at, let's just pick a segment here. This is the CLP segment. If we go over to our uh, spec, our implementation guide, we can go to the CLP pages. And there's an overview at the top that tells you this is claim payment information. It's in 2100 loop, which don't worry about that for the moment. Um, and these are the elements that can be found in that segment or on that line, if you will. And they're numbered CLP 01, 02, 03. And each one of these has information that follows it in detail. So if we look at our CLP 01, remember our, our character uh, asterisk here is separating our elements. So our first a line starts with the CLP, tells you what type of, of file, um, I'm sorry, what type of element it is. And then the first uh, value in between the asterisks, asterisks there is um, CLP01. If we go back to our spec, it's going to tell us it's the claim uh, submitter identifier. We probably are more used to hearing it called the patient control number or the claim number. And that is the spec telling us that. So if we just kind of walk down this CLP line a little bit here. Uh, the next character, CLP02, uh, is over here. It's the claim status code. If we drill into that page, CLP02 with a value of 2, 2 means it's been, the claim has been processed as a secondary claim by the payer. So that's what that 2 means. Now let's just walk through the rest. CLP03 is the total claim charged amount on the whole claim. CLP04 is the total claim paid amount. CLP05 is the patient responsibility amount if there is any on this claim. In this case, it's blank, so there is no patient responsibility on this particular claim. Uh, CLP06 is the claim filing indicator code. Uh, HM indicates health maintenance organization in this particular case. Could also say MC for Medicaid. Uh, CLP07 is the payer claim control number. This is the number the payer as assigned to the adjudication of the claim. CLP08 is the facility type code, and there's a list available somewhere of what those mean. And the CLP09 is the claim frequency type code, also found elsewhere. And just let's hunt and peck a little bit of here and some of the other elements and segments. Uh, NM1 segment, for example, is we find information on demographics. Uh, NM1, uh, just pick three of them out here, the NM101, with the QC, that QC indicates that what follows is a patient. That's called a qualifier, coincidentally with a Q. Uh, the NM102, the, the number one there, that indicates it's a person as opposed to, say, a non-person entity like a company. And NM103, where the Miller is, that's the last name. So in this particular case, if you put them all together, Miller is the last name of a patient who happens to be a person as opposed to an entity. Jump down here to the SBC segment. This is a service line or a procedure line. And we actually have what we call a compound element down here, which kind of in advance of what we're going to be able to cover today. But SBC01 has more than one element. Uh, Sub-element is what they're called. So SBC01-01, where that NU is, that's indicating it's an NUBC code as opposed to a HCPCS code. Uh, the SVC01-02, the second part of that same element, is 0122. It's, a, it's an NUBC procedure code. 
Uh, SBC03, if you go a little further to the right there, that's 612.76, that is how much was paid on that particular line item. And I didn't highlight it, but that 31.16 in the middle there, that's the amount that was charged on that individual line. So that's how that works. Now, if you have the ability to go through uh, with the text editor and pick those elements out, you could actually pull the data out and put it in some other format by hand, or in this case, I, I threw a bunch of um, the parts I cared about out into a spreadsheet. And you see up the top, we've got claim header information and I put my own titles on it. And here's the information I pulled out. And those SVC lines are each individual claim detail. So we have claim header and we have claim detail information. So each of the procedures have been highlighted. There happens to be five procedures and this is all the information on the procedure code. This is all one claim with a header and some details. And these are supposed to balance um, by, by the, the law of the spec, if you will. Uh, there's lots of balancing. This is just one example where the sum of the procedure charge amounts has to equal the sum of the total claim. Uh, so basically the detail lines plus all their adjust, plus or minus all their adjustments have to equal what's on the claim header, et cetera. So that, that's how you can pull that data out and you can pull the data out with the spec and uh, some text editing tools in the spreadsheet in this case, and you can do that. Now. Hunting and pecking like that, certainly it's not fun. Um, and a lot of the reasons for that is the not so much the codes that we saw with this, you know, the CLP and CLP 01, 02, 03. That's easy enough uh, to find with the, with the implementation guide. Uh, and that's our picture on the left. Uh, on the picture on the right, though, this is where it gets a little more difficult. Is the layout is these are laid out in a hierarchical form. So as you can see, like these DTM segments here on the left, they reference different dates associated with the claim, a start date, an end data, uh, et cetera. So in order to find information and put it in, into the format I just showed you in Excel, you've got to be able to go through and find all these little bits of child data and attach them to their parent. And, and sometimes you've got to go through this particular exercise several times and loop through. Some of these segments are required. Some of these segments are optional or uh, situational, as they call them. Uh, so you're not going to have a fixed way to go through. So putting this into Excel would be very difficult to go through with a macro, for example, and take every third line and call it a data service or whatever. That makes it kind of difficult. Not impossible, uh, just difficult. Which raises the question, the age-old question, why that format? Well, that format was written probably, uh, I don't have my history handy, but we're going back decades. And I think the banking industry or maybe the insurance industry started it back in the old mainframe days where uh, space was so limited uh, in a file uh, that they jammed things together in such a way as to maximize the amount of data they can stick into a small space. And that standard is stuck for decades and it's an international standard. And that's why you see it in that format. However, it doesn't help us very much. Uh, what I'd like to do now is kind of segue into an easier way to, uh, to look at an 835 file. Uh, EDI for regular people, as we like to call it. It's our tagline here. And we're going to do that using our EDI Power Reader tool, um, which I'll show you very, very briefly. But to us, the human readability, it's, it's often referred to, is more than taking those codes and turning them into uh, words or dollar amounts or whatever. It's, it's more than that. It's about turning it into a record layout. So we like human readability to ref, uh, reflect what people do in their real lives. You call up spreadsheets all the time to do financial analysis and such. And uh, those are linear. You're looking at them in rows. You're looking at them in columns. If you want to take information, financial information, and put it into your business system, your claim system, or whatever, it's going in in a record format as well because that's how databases are designed. So... What our reader does is that exact same thing I just put up. We take all those hierarchies, all that looping and repeating, et cetera, and we collapse them into a linear record. And let me show you how that looks. All right. This is our power reader. I have a file loaded. A uh, typical demo of this uh, runs for uh, quite, quite a bit. So look back at our YouTube channel for more specifics. I'm going to give you a very, very quick two-minute whirl through this, uh, and we'll, then we'll conclude this particular video. Uh, this is a desktop application. It's designed to process, uh, just like you'd process an Excel spreadsheet or a Word document. You do a file open. You point to a file. 
In this case, we pointed to an 835 remits file, the very same one we were just parsing. It loads the records, gives you some gives you some summary information to look at about the file itself, how many claims, et cetera, are ever in the file. But it also loads uh, the claims into this grid, where very much like an Excel spreadsheet would look. And we have two views. We have a claim view and a detail view. Scroll over to the right, you can see there's several columns turned on. You can see they're all written uh, in English, not in loop and segment speak. Um, the uh, claim view, we have each claim summarized on its own line. So here's a claim for John Lennon, or if we go up and actually look at the same uh, claim we were parsing in Excel a little bit ago, it's Mitch Miller. And here's our data service and our charge amount and our paid amount, et cetera, for the whole claim. Detail view here uh, gives you that same type of look. It's linear. We're, we're breaking down the hierarchies into records, but this time we're going one level deeper. And we're going down to the procedure level. And as we saw on that spreadsheet, there are five different procedures and you uh, VC codes, and there they are. Um, so each one of those procedures is put on its own line. Real quick navigation through here, and uh, we can do lots of things. We can sort these records just by clicking column headings. We can uh, move columns around. We can filter for our unpaid or um, denied claims and just show me my denied claims, sort them in descending order, hit the print button, for example, and print out a, a one of many of our outputs, which is a grid report. In this case, it's just my denials in descending order of dollars. Uh, we can print out um, an old fashioned looking uh, remit uh, reports, like something you might've gotten in the mail not long ago. More important than uh, what the uh, fields, what order they're in and how they're sorted is what you're looking at in the first place. And that is selectable. You get to pick what pieces of data you care to see on your reports. And if you wanna add uh, any of these, it's just a you know, DRG information, for example, you can just click and add those fields. You can also see how we map back to the loops and segments in some of these uh, formats here. Uh, and we can also find data. We can uh, do advanced querying on the data. We can do uh, probably the most powerful output is exporting. So everything you see in your grid here can be exported out to Excel, etc. cetera. Uh, that's the quick whirlwind tour. I'd like you to come back to our website and take a look at some more details or back to our YouTube channel for more specifics where you can go through some of those functions with a little more um, detail behind them. Thanks for listening today and uh, hope to hear from you all.